Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Night Live again, coming to you on Anzac Day Eve, and I'm joined this evening by our usual crew, Donkey, Pete, and Nikki. How are you going, guys? Good, Fiend. Yeah, How are you tonight? All good here, ready for a day off, eh? Very much looking forward to it. It'll be a pretty crusty start, but uh, once we get through that, it'll be a good day. Yeah. Uh, and welcome to Vardy on the chat, and I'm sure we'll be joined by the usual suspects. There's J-Mac. Uh So I don't have any other music tonight except for the outro at the end, so <laughs> uh, we may as well uh, <laughs> hook straight into the new. and it's Nikki's news tonight. <laughs> except I haven't really been watching anything because oh, I'm Nikki. in Melbourne. No, no, no good. <laughs> I do know some stuff. Well, you don't know any football news because you've been in Melbourne. That doesn't quite ring true. <laughs> no, quite honestly. I only got to watch one game uh, and a bit of the Port game, but it was our game on the Friday night. But apart from that, I was stuck at the Melbourne Showgrounds all weekend. Um, but we have to say condolences, um, first off, to Todd Marshall and the Port Adelaide Football Club. Um, the fact that, you know, his father passed away on Friday and he lost his mother in October, that's just horrendous news for anybody. Um, so... Condolences to him and his family and, and friends, and I hope he's got a really good uh, support network around him. Um, yeah. But he's taken indefinite leave, uh, which is completely understandable. But he's shown some really good signs um, in the um, for Port. He's one of the few Port players who actually has been kicking goals. Well, hopefully he can get through it and uh, and come back uh, later on in the season. And uh, you're right, Nick. We wish him well. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I did see there was some tribunal news. Um, so Lindsay Thomas got three weeks, I believe it is, and Selwood did get the one, which no, surprised me completely. He's been cleared. He's yeah. been oh, cleared. Oh, he got cleared. Oh, God. Yeah. He's off. And, and Lindsay <laughs> Thomas got three weeks plus plus one. So he got one week for punching Selwood, and then he got three weeks. Oh, that was the one. Yeah. I thought Selwood got done for a week. He yeah. did, but he appealed, oh, and he right. has been in the last – Half an hour has been cleared on appeal. There you go. Mm-hmm. I'd like to know what that oh. defence was. Well, it hey. was basically that he thought that he said that he was falling over and he wasn't actually going to strike. He um, he said all he wanted to do was verbally re- remonstrate with Lindsay Thomas and call him a fucking dog. <laughs> so he, wanted, it, he, he wanted to verbally remonstrate with his fist. No, no, he said all he wanted to do was verbally remonstrate with him and call him an effing dog, and which is actually in the transcript if you read the read the uh, tribunal. And oh. um, and uh, he, Lindsay Thomas, pushed him over and he fell down. So that wasn't it wasn't an attempt to strike. Hey, oh, hey oh, donkey, you can, donkey, you can afford to turn yourself up a little bit, mate. All I, all I would have said on Joel Sowell's behalf is, uh, are you seriously going to suspend this player for punching Lindsay Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. really the only defence you have to put because uh, nobody really in their right mind would suspend anyone for punching the lights out of that uh, particular player. Yeah. Although I think the reaction to Thomas's bump was completely over the top, to be honest. Except that he's a dog and he's done. You're Except even that it was softer now, He's got donkey. form. Yeah, you're I softer now. I just Come it on. <laughs> Donkey Put your microphone up to your mouth. I don't even know how that would work. Um, there we go. There you go. Now we can hear. That's very strange. Anyway, happy days. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I still call bullshit though on, on Selwood. He meant to punch him. Just like he didn't eye gouge Riley Knight. Do we honestly think Thomas's hit was worth three or four games? Yeah, oh. Yeah. Why? I oh, could have put him in a wheelchair. Oh, he, bullshit. He, he ran straight at his head. He did not. Yeah, he, he hit did. him in the bloody forearm first and then the shoulder and then his head. Yeah. Nah, he got that. The, the, there, was still, there was still momentum and kinetic energy and impact that went through his shoulder to his head. Oh, I'm not and saying there wasn't. The I'm not saying that. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't run past the ball. The ball was within two metres. He wasn't metres. even looking at, nah, nah, wasn't he looked at looking the ball. He looked yeah. at the ball. He looked at the ball. No, he, saw, so, he looked at the ball to make sure it was away. Hang, and on, then a he ran hang, on, away. hang on a minute. He looked at the ball. He saw Selwood coming and he decided to take the contact rather than go for the ball. And yeah, his only... Exactly his cool. only uh, Error well, was that he hit him in the head. 
Of course he initiated, he initiated it. He initiated the contact. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't take he in- the contact. He initiated it. But yeah, but you're allowed to do it's fo- in football. You're allowed to do that. His only error was that it, that it got him. Yes, you are. You're allowed to bump, Pete. You're allowed to you're bump, allowed to- and it well, wasn't. He's not allowed it, to do what he did. Well, what did he do? He, he bumped him and caught him high. You got three games. Yeah, right? I know that what happened, but what I'm doing is disputing it. I'm saying that it's overblown. Cameron mm-hmm. Ling needs to retract his comments because they were absolutely ridiculous. And he wouldn't have made those comments if it wasn't a Geelong player that got ironed out. Thomas didn't what did he hit say? Him. I was I, had, I was watching it on my phone under the table when I was well, Cameron Ling in the in the telecast was basically saying it was a dog act and blah blah blah. And that's ridiculous. There's there's yeah. no one no one in the media that should be saying that sort of stuff. The, the, so if, what they what Michael Christensen said in the tribunal was that because of the pace that he went in. The fact that he deviated away straight from the ball and that he had front-on contact, which guaranteed contact with the head, meant that it was uh, severe and careless, and that's why he got three weeks. Mm. Except yeah, it wasn't up. front-on contact. It was side-on contact that caught him in the head. Uh, so you, what, you, have a, you have a look at the footage. He I have looked it. at the footage. I'm not actually, like, I'm not... Uh, well, I'm, not I'm not saying you have a look at it, but yeah. it's, I'm just saying maybe have a re-look and you'll see that he comes from the, from the inside of the shoulder, not from the outside back of it. Yeah, inside what of the is, shoulder is the side. It's not the front. The front what do you is think of chest. Burton's? What do you think of Burton's? I thought it should have got a game. I thought Burton's was no different than Dougie's on merit. Well, slightly different in the sense that Dougie's did, Dougie did hit the head first. But yeah. the thing is, is what I can't understand is that we. I thought that we all were comfortable with where the bump was. And that is, if you choose to bump... And as a result of that bump, there is head contact, even if it's incidental and you cause injury or concussion or whatever it may be, then you're, you're done. And I, well, it's now changed I, again. I, I, I feel like, and looking, looking at the reasoning of Christian, I think I, I feel that he, he arrived at his decision and he's manipulated those rules to try to, 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 you know, to support the, the outcome that he wanted. No, no, it's that changed, was, that, that Pete. What, what you're missing is that the, the adjudication has changed. There is now well, room... His interpretation, that, yeah, his interpretation has changed it. No, it's not his interpretation. The yeah, they have. You need to go back and have a look. They have actually changed how it's adjudicated. So how is it? So tell me what the law... So you tell me what the law it is. It basically says if there was unforeseen... Contact, so they've put that unforeseen uh, contact in there. So um, the ruling from Christian was basically uh, the way he hit him. He couldn't have foreseen that there was head high contact going to be made. My my understanding of of, of the rule is that if um, um, uh, if it's reasonably foreseeable, and they define and 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 what they say is that if you if you if you bump somebody. Then the fact that you have bumped somebody um, uh, effectively def- that that meets the definition of reasonable foreseeability. I don't now, think what that's the Christian's case done? Year. What Christian's done is is that he's 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 operated on the word it may, and so what he's done is that he's effectively read an interpretation into it that hasn't previously been there. That's my understanding. But anyway, after what I read today, do, do you think that's a more um, do you think that's a more authentic? Interpretation of the rule, though, Pete. Well, well, well that's that's another argument, and, and I think that's a reasonable argument. It's a reasonable question, um, but it's what's annoying is that we've we've you know all last year we've we've been going on. You choose to bump, and then it, it's it's reasonably foreseeable that you're going to you know that you can cause head con- um, head injury by doing that, and whether it be by whiplash. I mean, it used to be you didn't even have to make contact with the head. It was just the whiplash. But you could you um, could make that argument for any tackle, any marking contest, yeah. just about 90% of contests on a football field. So if it, uh, my understanding was there was a slight changing of the words, but even if there's not, even if it's just a, a change in the interpretation, maybe that's just a correction on something that was actually previously unworkable because you can't play football without having a... a without reasonably foreseeing that you may get head contact at some stage during the game. Mm. You can't. Well, look, it's, it's, it, that's, it, look, that's all, that's well and good. That's fine. But it, what, what annoys me is that, you know, we, we just, this is, and this is what the, the issue has been with the tribunal for so many years. We just settled on, 
you know, w- w- where the game is at. And then all of a sudden it just completely changes. Well, I think it moves it back in a good direction, to be honest with you. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, it, it does because we don't want to see the bump removed from the game. And, no, and we don't, but, and we also don't want to see guys like Sean Higgins spending the night in hospital, getting you know having bloody plastic surgery on his lip. Yeah, I know, Pete, but he could have got plastic surgery on his lip from running into someone's knee. I mean, you play, you're playing a contact that's, sport. That's, that's accidental. Yeah, well, that's that's an accidental. But the thing that's, is, is that, that that contact's initiated by Burton. He's he's run in. He's chosen to bump, and then bumping you know, is legal. Be, I think he should be accountable. Bumping's legal. It's legal, but 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 causing a head injury shouldn't be. But if the head injury is incidental, if if it's not as a direct consequence of the bump, then the person laying the bump can't be accountable. Uh, to me, to me, the whole intent originally was that you can't take a bloke out by hitting him in the head. That's the intent, and then we got all PC about it. And basically, if if there was any head injury as a as a result of contact, then the guy got a suspension. Well, to me, you either remove the bump or you allow the bump to remain. And by allowing the bump to remain, you need to take into consideration the possi- the strong possibility of accidental contact because yeah, it's you don't a contact have to remove sport. the bump because there's yeah there's well, hundreds of bumps that go on in a game. No, you don't. There's hundreds of bumps that go on during a game that don't cause that don't cause head injury. But you know the the impact from a bump, even if it's legal and has no head high contact, Peter, the the shaking of the head. Don't and, call and me the, Peter. My mum calls me Peter. Wasn't <laughs> <the, laughs> well, your name Peter J? <laughs> <laughs> like Sorry, the, the whip, the whiplash uh, from the impact of a of a shoulder to shoulder bump is enough to cause concussion. You don't actually have mm. to. It's not the impact of hitting someone in the head that causes the concussion. It's it's the shaking of the brain. So mm. that's that's what, that's how I got a concussion. I got a front on hip and shoulders. You only hit me in the chest, but it was the whiplash of the head, and I turned to chase and then just collapsed sideways. Yeah, um, it, she it didn't happens. hit me in the head at all, but I had a concussion. So you either accept that you're playing a contact sport and therefore you're you're at risk of of having a an ACL or a broken ankle or a concussion, or you don't play contact sport. And I'm all for. Taking, making, framing rules that don't allow players to line up other players and take them out by hitting them in the head. But I don't think there's any way that you can legitimately legislate for some bumps to be legal and some bumps to be illegal just on the basis of incidental contact. That's that's my point of view. Mm. Anyway, moving along. Yep. Any more news? Um, C- Cicely got one match for his misdemeanour. Um, does anybody know? Because that's his second one. If he gets the third one, is it like a bigger? I don't think there's a, there's not a, there's not that loading's gone. I think each, each, each offense is each offense. They're just single now. Yeah. Um, and what, oh, apparently Podsy Adley, Adley is doing a report regarding runners and they might have to bring some rules in about where they're standing, etc. I thought there was already. About where runners could be and couldn't be. I thought there was yeah, too, think, but I think it's only at certain points in the game, like at kick ins or centre bounces. They, they really need to tidy that up. I, that's a, I reckon it's a ridiculous part of our game, it, and I, I absolutely can't stand it. And the sooner they clean that up, the better. Yeah, I agree, Pete. I agree. I, I think it's and you can't and you cannot tell me that runners aren't strategically placed to block up space. They are part of the zone. And they need to be. They need to be because all they do is hang around on the ground. It's ridiculous. No other sport does that. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Up my head. They sh- it really. It should. Um, uh, PJ Crows. Where'd you get that from, mate? Kosh taking the AFL to the High Court over SPP. Yes. Yeah, is that of, just breaking news? Is it, he threatened it? Has he threatened it or is he doing it? I don't know whether he's actually doing it, but uh, the big issue is that. Um, they don't agree with the AFL report. This has turned into a mess. Well, they, 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 it's not it's the, the issue. The, the, the nub of the issue is is that they, it's, it's how it's described. And what the issue that Port have got is the conclusion that the AFL report has come to, and that is that 
and it's not been released yet, but what I think we can what we can assume is that it's some kind of sexual misconduct. And Porter, I think, would be happy to cop the one gun, the one extra game because they want to ban him for three. Well, he's already had two, so he just needs to sit out one more game. And I, I think Porter will let that slide. But what they won't let slide is the way that it's been characterised by the AFL. That's no, the- if no, the problem is that he actually has to, as part of that, because um, um, I put it up on the board, the respect and responsibility. So the lowest um, kind of standard thing that they, they talk about is that you have to apologise. And apparently Sam Pepper is refusing to apologise because if he apologises, yeah, that means but, he thinks sorry, he's don't, guilty. Sorry, sorry. I, I got this. The, 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 what I just said is actually part of it, Nikki. It is part of it. It's not okay, no. Okay. It is it is part of it, and it might be the apology is part of it too. And I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying there, but it is part of it that that, that they refuse to allow them to characterise this as a sexual misconduct. So that was that was reported in the Age just today. Because that would then a lead quiet, to I had a very quiet day at work. That that would lead <laughs> to the possibility of criminal charges, wouldn't it? If there was well, an omission in a report. Depending on how, depending on exactly what it is that they want to actually say, but yes, it, it, it could have some kind of, and that may be what the reason that they're arcing up about how it's being characterised. I but think then you just, also have to have the the victims willing to go to court. If the victims not willing to make a, a statement, etc., then who, then the cops actually they they cannot do anything about it. And we've seen that she didn't want to take it to court. She just wanted. She went to the club, and all she wanted was an apology. Did she yeah. go to the and club wanted, and wanted to let him know. And he's not prepared to do that, is he? No, he's not. Because no. he's saying, well, I, I was too drunk. I don't know if I did it or not. Yeah, and the other thing is, is that obviously the AFL are operating on a completely different standard of proof as well. So they don't have to, you know, prove anything, a criminal charge beyond reasonable doubt. All, they, all they're doing is balance probabilities. But there has to be some using, evidence, using though. Administrative bed. Well, they must have some evidence. But what I'm saying is that it only needs to be 51, 49. It only needs to be an administrative burden. It doesn't need to be a criminal burden, which is, you know, 99, 1. Mm. So it's, it, <clears throat> it, it, it shouldn't – I think it's more about it. I think it's actually more about his reputation. Yeah. Um, uh, P- anything. PJ Crow's Rose is a good point, though, because um, my I, I've often th- thought during this last couple of weeks, why the AFL even involved? Because traditionally because this has been something that's <laughs> been – it's the new respect and responsibility clause. The AFL integrity unit have to be involved because then it's not clubs that can just sweep it under the carpet okay. and keep it hidden and okay. pay hush monies. Clubs can actually be penalised if they actually are offering monetary um, rewards to somebody who's come to the club with an accusation. So that's actually part of it. It's stopping that occurring. <sighs> It seems like a convoluted mess. I mean, the the woman went to the Port Adelaide Football Club initially to lodge the complaint. Surely, if surely the better way of dealing with it, not, and I'm not having a crack at her. I'm saying I'm describing the system. Surely, if she didn't get what she felt was um, appropriate um, response from the Port Adelaide Football Club, surely at that point, then she would have the avenue of going to the AFL and their integrity unit. And then lodging a formal complaint with the AFL, so essentially escalating but how, how it. How many from, people would know that? But well, they would know it if if that was the system and it, and it was publicised. Yeah, you what, know. What's the, um? I was no, going to just just quickly to ask is is what you're saying, Nikki? Is that once something like this is reported to a club, is there an automatic trigger for the AFL to investigate now? Yes, right. they they have to report it straight away to the AFL, and the integrity unit comes in and starts investigating. Yeah, and 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 I wasn't clear early on on was the initial report made to the media or was it made to the club? Made, made to, to the, the club. club. It was made to the club. Yeah. And so how it got to the media is a very interesting question, um, yeah. because my understanding is that she didn't wasn't her that went to the media. Well, it was the footage that was released to the media. Whoever took the footage. Um, of which was uh, outside, yeah, which oh, wasn't yeah. that wasn't the footage of the offence, but it was footage of Sam, um, particularly under the weather. Um, that's what made it to Channel Seven, uh, and that was probably from a, a person not associated with uh, the person that uh, uh, to whom the offence was allegedly committed. So, 
Uh, it just seems like a convoluted process. I would have thought that the, the club could have been uh, charged with the responsibility of dealing with it in the first instance and maybe having it rubber stamped by the integrity unit and the integrity unit being an escalation point if there couldn't be a, uh, an appropriate resolution. But for the AFL to get involved in these situations every time, I mean, what what would have happened if the AFL have investigated and then and fe- then found Sam innocent of uh, of the charge? He's missed three weeks of footy. Yeah, and well, and I think I think also there's a if if the AFL have done an investigation which has a different conclusion from the Port investigation, um, and they want to suspend the player, uh, my understanding is they haven't shared the full information of that report with the club. I don't know what you're doing with your microphone, Donkey, but you need to talk into it, mate, because we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, um, I was just saying that I, if they, if they're, I just feel like there's a due process here that if you're going to try and if not if you're doing a suspend somebody and say that your investigation has turned up different findings to um, to their investigation, then you should show and clearly demonstrate why that was, and if the club in Port Adelaide are saying that they haven't been given that clear indication as to why there's a different finding. I can understand why they don't, they, you know, they're, they're going down this path. I think, I don't think it should go public and I don't think everyone should read the report um, and I understand the sensitivities around these matters. But I, if you're going to be suspending players and, and, um, and you know, putting penalties on parties, then both parties need to be able to see what that, how that decisions get arrived at. Yeah, it makes you wonder why that, they've just got a summary rather than the full report. Yeah, it's just that, that you, could you imagine if a Crows player for any reason was suspended and we're just getting a summary, or just how cranky we were about the Tibbet Gate sanctions, where you know they've just said this is what it is, and we don't actually really know the ins and outs of what happened. You know, that's, that's not right. Well, we would have lo- we would have lost draft picks by now if that had been a Crows player. So. <laughs> yeah. And and all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be divisive here, uh, and Nikki will probably smash me in the face. But from, <laughs> from but from just what, with my words, just with my words. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, the alleged offence was uh, Sam, like to call a spade a spade, groped her on the backside. Is that correct? Yes. That's the understanding? I think put his hand up, up her skirt. I think that was... It was down. He went from the top yeah. down, apparently. Top okay. down. All right. So the girl herself is only looking for an apology. Yep. Does it... Um, does it warrant a three-match suspension? Well, the well, the the, the one-match suspension that Port imposed was for breaking of curfew, not not for yeah. So that was that was a, that was a separate um, finding yeah uh, by Port Adelaide, and so they found him in in, in effect guilty of um, breaking curfew. So that was a player-imposed one-match suspension. Yep. And then the this second week was yeah was him imposing his own penalty on himself apparently. Yeah, but I guess I guess, Fien, I'm probably you know what you're. I guess what you're asking is still reasonable because what what the AFL is saying is that well we would have suspended we would have suspended him for three games, but he served two. Yeah. So he only needs to serve one more. So I guess that does return to your original question: Is it worth three games? Yeah, and, and not for one moment am, am I diminishing uh, what he did or, or condoning it. But I'm saying, are we setting a dangerous precedent uh, for possible future misdemeanors by other players? I mean, if if a hand down a skirt is worth three matches, um, you know, how, where does it, where do we go from there? I, I don't yeah, but this know. This is a hand down a skirt when she didn't want the hand down the skirt. This is yeah, but the girl herself is only looking for an apology. So, and I, I understand the the complexities around the issues uh, with uh, women ha- having to deal with reporting sexual assault and all the rest of it. But, and I'm just, I'm not, I, it's, it's not a, I don't have a particular opinion on it. And I, Nikki, I'm interested in your opinion on this, but for mine, it's kind of setting a precedent that is difficult to be consistent with. Uh, yeah, and, and I actually agree with you on that. And the problem is that the AFL like to have these little set standards but um, assaults of this kind of nature, everyone is different. Every incident is different. The levels are different, um, et cetera. 
And I don't think you can have a standard um, punishment about it um, because of that. And I think what also needs to be taken into account is the victim in that instance as to what they wish. Um, and so I, and, and looking at that respect and responsibility policy, I think it's a mess. Um, and we all know, I mean, we've argued back and forth continuously about how shit their integrity unit is and you wouldn't trust anything with that name. Um, so it's, I'm just in so many different minds about this particular one. I, I, I do agree, I actually think three might be too severe, but it, unless it's they're doing that extra punishment because he's refusing to apologise, mm. I mean, uh, which is all she is- wanted in the first place. But And, and I can understand American Crow, who is a lawyer, is actually saying uh, as a lawyer he would advise his client to never apologise. Mm. So you're really in such a a hard place um, in this incident. I I mean, you've got a situation too where the investigation's dragged on for three weeks. I mean, this should have been resolved within the week and as a consequence of it not having been resolved expediently, uh, this poor girl is continuing to have to deal with it rather than uh, uh, moving on. So the the whole process is not serving the victim in any sense it's all again again it's about afl posturing and their perception in the community of being a you know respectful organization blah 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 Uh, they really don't give a rat's ass about the victim in this instance and i guess that's the point where i was about yeah and that's the point i guess where i was leading to that this is all self-serving bullshit by the afl and it's not proactive and it's not productive and it's certainly not serving the victim in my opinion i did wonder because some of the terminology that was being used earlier on where they were talking about how they in, had to interview other people was whether there was actually other incidents involving sam that were then being that that was the impression i kind of got from what was kind of being said and I wonder if they don't want, if, if that is the case, we don't know, but that one impression from wording they were using early on about why it was taking a while to be done was maybe they don't want that to be made public if there are other incidents because the AFL do want to still keep things hushed under the, um, under the carpet as we've well seen. Uh, for years, to, especially to do with Essendon, they tried to keep that in the quiet. Now, I've just muted Donkey because he's, I don't know what's happening with his microphone, but it's driving me crazy. So, Donkey, get your <laughs> shit together. <laughs> he's out of control. Get your shit together, man. I don't know what's happening. Well, it's, your, it's your cord scratching or something. I don't know what you're using, but it's not a bloody microphone. Are you, got, are you using like a like a piece of string and a, and a cup or something tonight? Um, I don't know whether you can hear me, but I'm using just my headphones plugged into my phone. Yeah, oh, there you go. Anyway. You told me to we, <laughs> so is, he's got the microphone rubbing on something. Yeah, it's the cord rubbing on something, mate. Yeah, if you've no, got a was, collar on or something, fix it, donkey. Hey, I'm not. I'm move not along. Move yeah, along. Let's move along. So uh, what else have we got? Um, oh, the whole port thing in general is they've had a disaster this week. And it's been interesting. Yeah, no, that, yeah. footy. It, yeah, it's footy. interesting that David Kosh has been particularly silent about his club after being less than silent uh, when an yeah. innocuous little comment to Damien Hardwick called, caused a bit of a stir for us earlier on in the year. Um, they got some issues well, in, culturally, surely. In donkey's tinfoil hat, no. So I've thought to myself, is this, is, you know, he's blowing up about this and trying to divert away from the fact that his side sucks. And then he put he reappointed Ken Hinckley for another four years, and it was obviously a really bad call. And they've got spectators punching on in the McGarry room, and they got streakers happening, and they and they've got P hearts, and they can't get past three quarter time. Like it was just, you know, it was his costume kicked up a stink, so I don't realise how bad his footy is. Yeah, I wouldn't like to be a Port supporter at the moment. Anyway, what other news have we got? Anything? Oh, there's a game on at the moment, which is kind of amusing. Yeah, I was going to cover that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, oh, and um, because I wasn't there on Sunday and so the cockwomble didn't get done mm. and Macca can nominate me as much as he likes because I give out the award, I'm never going to win it. Oh, thanks for um, listening, Nikki. <laughs> I did, which was quite funny. 
Um, but I, you actually missed, I think, and an, considering we're on the port bandwagon, um, their training staff picking Hamish Hartlett up and nearly dropping him on his head. I didn't see that. They had him on the stretcher and they went to pick him up and the guys who were at the head, the bit where he's bleeding from, the bit where he's hurt, they don't pick that up at the same time. So the... Um, so it's actually at an angle, and they nearly he nearly slid off. He bashed his head again. <laughs> well, you know, it's a bit of a shoestring budget down there at the moment. Let's be honest. And they did, and they had the the oh, the little cart came out. Nah, we're going to walk him off. We're not going to put him on the cart. We're going to walk the long way. I Idiots. actually thought that once a, a stretcher came on the ground, that he had to be on it. Yeah. So the car, is a, the car is a stretcher, but I thought that was an AFL rule, that once yeah. once a stretcher comes on the ground, the player has to leave the ground on the stretcher. So why didn't they get yeah, fined for it? Yeah, but the stretcher on the cart, um, they probably will. Yeah, but it doesn't matter whether the it's the carts on the on the cart or the stretchers on the cart or being lifted by a person. It's the same with the buddy thing. Why why didn't Sydney get fined for ball tampering, Pete? Well, he should have been. Um, yeah, he should be on his way to being deported out of the country by now. <laughs> Is that the most well, ridiculous no, no, no. rule you've ever heard? He's not, going, he's not going to West Coast. But hang on, let's talk about this for a minute. Is that the most ridiculous rule you've ever heard of? Not allowed to wipe the ball with the chucks. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because later on Jenkins wipes the ball on the ground. Well, you can wipe the ball with anything. You can wipe allowed. the ball with your jumper. You can lick it. You can wipe it on your mate's Guernsey. Why can't you use the chucks, for goodness sake? Has anyone well, got an answer? No idea. Does anyone it's ball know? tampering, Fane. Because <laughs> the tampering. AFL is stupid? Ball tampering. We're not, we're not going for a reverse swing. <laughs> oh, but he does. Yeah, well, yeah, but he does it naturally. I, I just don't understand why he can't wipe the ball with the bloody chucks. It seems to me to make perfect sense. In fact, I, if I was the AFL, I'd be making the uh, the umpires wipe the ball every time they got the ball the hand the the ball in their hands to try and well, maintain the. Well, yeah, there's five of them. Yeah, so it's not like it's not like not having a dry ball isn't the goal anyway. Oh, and I you do see the umpires actually thing. wipe it on their top before they do a throw in. Yeah, I just think it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, American Crows picked up that uh, I referenced players licking their balls. Thanks, AC. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one of us that's actually awake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was stupid. Uh, any other news? I don't think so. Let's move, no, on. move along. Let's move on to competitions really, really quickly, Donkey, because A, your microphone's shit, and B, the round's still going. Yeah, <laughs> And C, my computer's done a phoenix. So All right, well, I'll do it then really quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tipping is still going. I've got one, two, three, four, five. And at the moment, I'm 400 in front on Dream Team, but I'm going to get overrun. And that was competitions for the week. So yeah. let's move. This is all about Fiend. <laughs> Who cares about anybody else? Right, let's move on to Macca's Sweets and Smacks. Oh, Macca's not here, so we'll move on. Let's do the preview of... <laughs> <laughs> I just can I just um, just a quick comment about Friday night. I was at the game and had a fabulous time. I have to say it was uh, it was a, a really good night and um, really good night at the SCG too. I have to say the um, uh, the quarter time um, rendition of uh, Sweet Caroline was just absolutely brilliant, Seriously? and I couldn't. No, nah, it was unbelievable. Like the, the the whole crowd was was singing. It was it just went right off. Um, was, so they pay uh, attention during the quarter time breaks, but not during the actual game. Yes, well, you're in Sydney. That's you've turned into a bloody Sydney sider, Peter. I was what talking to a Sydney. Time? I was chatting to a Sydney supporter, and he said that you know that they've got to have, they've got to have night games in Sydney because it's somewhere to go and something to do. And <sighs> if uh, they have day games, then people aren't really that much interested. And said the, the crowds are significantly different. But so, just, um, just on a personal note, did Stav sing as well? Did he, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> he, um, yeah, there was a uh, significant beverage consumption, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, I and Stav, I think, I think Stav might have uh, 
bashed out a couple of chords as well. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a pretty funny night, I have to say. Just for those listening, both Pete and I played with uh, that particular gentleman play cricket, so it's quite amusing. Uh, it was, uh, but no, Sydney Sydney cricket game was was uh, it was a, it was a brilliant atmosphere, and I have to say I hadn't uh, been to the football. Um, in Sydney for many a long year, and uh, it was very enjoyable. Uh, and obviously, the result was great as well. Yeah, the result was fantastic. Um, but you know, we've got to follow it up, and we've got Gold Coast this week. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I haven't had any acknowledgement about about some of my comments last week about when it, you know, I actually tipped them. Ah, oh, because chose to ignore them, really. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much. <laughs> good work, good work, Pete. What was your yeah, name? <laughs> I was the only one. You're all, but I, I thought that I'd get up. Not me. I picked the crows. I yeah. didn't. No, I didn't. I, I must admit, I, I, and I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. Un- well, I was unhappy about the selection, but in terms of my tip, I didn't think it did my tip any harm. Uh, when I saw the selection on Thursday night, I had no idea what they were doing. The only complaint that I have uh, about the whole thing is why they played Hardigan, because there was already plenty of scuttlebutt around that he had a hamstring prior to the match, so he's obviously gone in with a strained hamstring. Um, why Why did they do that? They thought it would be all right. I think they, they really do like that match-up on Buddy. He, he, um, and, and, you know, it's the only thing I can think of, really. We've lost Hardigan for three weeks now. But he, but he, no, Hardigan doesn't play on Buddy. Talia does. No, I think you find uh, that he starts... Hardigan started... The last few times we played Sydney, Hardigan's played on... Franklin, and he started on him on uh, on Friday he's night, take, but, then, but Talia went to him higher. when Hardigan was injured. He's taking um, him when he's higher, but when he goes deep, then it's Talia. Well, I, all I can say is I was at the game, and I, I heard you the other night um, on the Sunday wrap, Nikki, and it was all, it's all about being at the game. It's only if you've been at the game <laughs> that you can see these things. I'm going on and previous games you, when they've done it. <laughs> I'd had a significant amount of beers before I'd even got to the SCG. But <laughs> what I can yeah, tell not, you... Yeah, we're not trusting is, your memory then. What I can tell you is that uh, we set up with Hardigan on, t- on um, Franklin at the start. So at um, what point did we bring... Uh, sorry, Donkey. At what point did we right. send uh, Otten back to double team? Because that was basically the, the go, wasn't it, from very early on? Yeah. Was that once Hardigan went out? I, I, I think... Because I still, because I still I don't. don't, I don't I, the reason I why I asked, start, I remember how they all started, <laughs> and then I, I remember going to the bar, and then I, I rem- <laughs> remember, remember sweet, sweet, I remember going, sweet, sweet Caroline. <laughs> yeah, I remember singing. <laughs> and I remember it's a quarter time break. I remember kissing Stav at about. Uh, oh, no one wants. A couple of minutes, a couple of minutes after the final siren went. No, no, we don't. Come on. Um, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, oh, no. The only reason I ask is because I'm still interested to know, like, given if they thought Hardigan was going to get through the game, I'm still interested to to know what their plans were with Otten because mm. I think that actually fell into place for us. Um, and Look, this- it did, and, and as as Pikey's comments were, you know, he, he wasn't even selected. I mean, it was Hampton that was supposed to be playing. Mm. Mm. He wasn't, and you know, completely different style of player. And I think at the end they were probably just short of options yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. experienced fit player come in because Hampton hurt himself in training, yeah. and he was Hampton was meant to come in. Yeah. So I don't think there was and, any particular plan for Otten. Mm. And watching the replay yesterday, it wasn't just Otto um, Otten coming across as the third man. It was whoever was the closest who could do the loose because you had Kelly, you had um, yeah, Uday I, doing yeah. it. Yeah, um, you're right. I think it just it just fell into our lap. To be yeah, honest, it was yeah. just it, it was a real stroke of good fortune, and he had Four a very good game. Yeah, he, he didn't play bad at all, Otten. But I don't think he was he played the game that originally he was earmarked to play. <laughs> but you know, all's well that ends well, really. I think I don't know whether I I didn't get to watch it live because I was um, uh, otherwise waylaid. But I did notice. Do we have a drinking problem on the Crowcast? Do we no, have to I, have a meeting? Who's well, Pete was pissed at the footy. You were obviously pissed because you're in Northern Territory. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching it on my little phone, sitting on the kitchen was, floor of a share house. I was at my uh, I was at my thirtieth, um, fifth birthday bash, drinking, having drinking, and having karaoke. That's what I was doing. So on, I was also basking. Did you green. sing? Que- did you sing Sweet Caroline? Uh, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go and make a point. Well, I was just going to say, it looked like we started off the game. 
um, not necessarily with the plan B, but with a strategy and a tactic of um, doing a really high press and, and a lot of pressure up uh, up the front end of the, the front of the ground when we were going forward. And it looked like we were trying to execute a mission in the um, uh, at least in the first quarter. And I wonder whether that was a it's a way of us sort of trying to get switched on right from the start. You know, not just go out there and play, but go out there and we need to do these two, three things right now um, as a way to sort of, yeah, sort of galvanise what we're doing in that first little bit. And if it is, I think it's a really good idea. It's what, you know, it's what I've done in times when I've coached juniors. It's, you know, make sure you seal off this person and run here and here. And um, it just looked like we were, it didn't look like we were just doing the um, standard pressure. It looked like we were actually trying to zone off and do some, do some interesting tactical things on the ground, I thought. Well, that, that grounds, because it's so much smaller, and the fact that Sydney pretty much exclusively kicked to Buddy, um, so if you've got a plan like that in place, it's going to work pretty successfully. But I think the size of the ground also helped us um, because we know as much as we like Cam Ellis Yolman and uh, Greenwood, they're not the fastest blokes, but Sydney's midfield isn't fast either. Um so I think that actually helped us in, in putting the pressure on them. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, and I, I do concede that it's a small ground and I, and I, and I understand the uh, – I'm not necessarily talking about the finite parts of the tactics we use, but we, we definitely use some, if that makes sense. You're like talking about focus, yeah. Donkey. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like there was, a, there, was a, there was deliberate focus on how we wanted to play the, the first part of the game and it wasn't the normal way to play the game. So what and you're I suggesting, Donkey, is that perhaps at – uh, uh, during some games um, where we're perhaps the hunted rather than the hunter, we perhaps don't uh, have uh, a focused or concise game plan to execute uh, at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Or or do something different and, and turn into hunting them, like break their game down and don't make our game so predictable. That way any tactics that stop our game plan isn't going to work because we're not playing it. We're playing something else. It's an interesting observation because we're very much about playing our game to the best of our ability, aren't we? And so players just go out there week in, week out, you know, with the same structure and play the same role and all the rest of it, whereas you're dead set right. And it was the same against Richmond. We had a a particular uh, strategy against Richmond um, as a consequence of how we got beaten in the grand final and that worked as well. And... I think you're onto something there, mate. I, I think there's a real uh, sameness about the Crows when we are playing games that uh, we match up well on the opposition or we uh, are favoured to win. And uh, history will tell you they're the games that Adelaide are most vulnerable in. It's, it, and it makes you wonder whether uh, you know that sameness, that that desire to just drill in the game plan and perfect the game plan and play the same way week in week out, it doesn't have a numbing effect on the players. Yeah, and they're not there's and and, it, and I think uh, you sort of summed up what I was trying to say quite well. It's about that focus too. So you know we're not just go all right, let's go out. It's like getting to work for the day. And you know if you've got a special project on, you know you've got to execute that project. You know you still do the rest of the job you've got to do well, but you. You really focus on how you're executing that project. So, uh, you know, if you've got a special project or how you're going to go out the game when you get up, rock up to, a, say, a Richmond or a Sydney, and you really focus on what that is, um, you sort of lift your whole self to, to like, ill. Whereas if you sort of sort of rock up like we did against Collingwood or North last year, we're like, all right, let's just go through the motions and we're going to get the win. We're just not yeah. going to do that. Like, I think you're you onto something there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Gold Coast are not going to be easy beats. So I think uh, Pete. Uh, pinpointed last week uh, that they're they're going to be around the mark and and win a few sneaky games and you know they're due for a win against us. They're, they're, we're the only team they haven't beaten yet in the competition, um, and they do play t- quite tall. Uh, so uh, you know, and they have got a reasonable midfield. So you know, it's looking like uh, Crouch might be back and Sloan uh, bets probably another week. I think. McKay is supposed to be available as well. Okay. Oh, yay. Um, I, d- I don't yeah. think Crouch was actually, was he? Yeah, Pike, Not, was, yeah. Pike was saying tonight okay. that he trained with the group and obviously, has same with Sloan, has to get through uh, the main training session, but they're both on track to play, but I'm not it, sure about bets. 
If Sloan's not 100%, I don't want to see him come back in. No, likewise. Same. Um, he just, um, he's, his output this year, he's only had one sort of, you know, Sloan level game and he's had three probably subpar games this year. And and if he's not running around 100%, he's just not that good enough to break whatever tag or pressure they're playing to. And he's just, he's just not, he's not, um, he's not doing himself any favours. And I'd really just- love to see... Um, Paholki and Gallucci get another crack at it. Like they, yeah. they just played in a brilliant win. I was just going to, I was going to pick up on that point, or pick up on that point. I, I reckon it's a real concern when um, you have a win like you do on Friday, um, and you, you squeeze every last bit of juice out of out of your young players, and there is a temptation, I think, to to think right, okay, we, if we can beat Sydney away with this uh, with this kit. And there's no reason we need to actually change it and strengthen our team because we're only going to come home to play Gold Coast. Whereas I just think that when you have got young players, you've got to be really, really careful in the sense that um, you know, whether you're going to get that kind of performance out of them two weeks in a row. Um, so it's a tricky one, and um, I, I don't disagree with what you say. I mean, I think that you know you do have to make sure that you know you've got players are 100 percent fit. But the temptation, I'm sure, is to sort of say, well, look, we could probably get another week's rest into them, and we can just rely upon those young kids to you know squeeze out one more performance. But you know, it would be an absolute uh, dog's breakfast if we uh, if we rolled over to Gold Coast this weekend after that win on Friday night. I, yeah. I think. Uh, to me, if Matt is coming in, then it has to be one of the midfielders that goes out, and it's probably Cam. Oh no! It'll be it'll be it'll be Polky or Gallucci that will go first. I reckon out of the yeah, except except they were actually playing. They were more the for, the forward rotations. They weren't being rotated through the midfield. <sighs> We'd be well, pretty sluggish just... with Crouch, Greenwood, and um, Ellis Yolman in, in there. We'd be yeah. pretty slow. Well, that, that's the lineup we were going with earlier in the. Yeah, but again, by the necessity, I guess. Uh, look, you know. But that's when we were playing Dougie up but, forward. But P- P- Polky and Polky and Galucci will go out first before Ellis Yolman and Greenwood will. Mm. And and I'm not saying that you know that they didn't perform well, and I, I thought that they were terrific, particularly Galucci in the last quarter. A couple of his touches were superb. Yeah. Um, but I just think that, that if that's if that happens, I think that's the way that they'll go. They'll be first in, first out. Yeah. Well, sorry, last in, first out. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily. I, I, I understand the logic, Pete, um, but I'm a bit with Nicky mm. on this one. I, I don't like Greenwood, Crouch, and Ellis Yolman, three of our four Yeah, and as you pointed out, Gib- Gibbs isn't fast either. No. And Gall- Gallucci and uh, Paholke gave us a really nice hard body around the bowl. Well, we, and, we have plenty of that, though. We, we don't yeah. lack a hard body around the ball. But, but up forward. We lack speed. Up forward. Um, and Gooch has got speed. Mur- uh, Murphy's fit, too, I was meant to yeah. say as well. He's the yeah, other one. right. And you'd, Murphy deserves to come back in. He did nothing wrong. That, yeah, and does that mean McKay comes back in because he can run? Oh. Oh, he'll come back in. Well, who does he come in for? Well, who, what will happen is that he'll come in and go to half back, and Miller will, that, will be. But that means Miller away from where shunt- he's playing the best. Yeah, absolutely. But he'll be shunted somewhere because they've got to find a spot for McKay. So, in other words, you're not optimistic about um, selection this week, Pete. I'm not optimistic in, in that particular instance. I'm, I've got no doubt that McKay will come back in, and they'll need to find a spot for him. And so they'll put him probably at half back, and Miller, who I thought was terrific. Um, there on the weekend, and he's been he was good there against mm, who was it? Was it I can't remember it. Second half, of, I think it was a home Tigers. game Tigers. against Richmond. Thanks, mate. Yeah, he was fantastic at half back in that second half of that game. But you know that was because McKay went off in the last quarter, and you know they've got to find a spot for McKay. Half back's easiest, so then they Miller get shunted around. Well, yeah, I mean, if if I was the selectors, I, I'd be. And if let's let's assume we had uh, McKay, Sloan, Matt Crouch, Lockie Murphy um, available, I don't think they all come back in. I don't think DMAC comes back in. Um, and uh, I think CY probably comes out for for Sloan if he's fit. Um, and Lockie Murphy's probably going to come in for Paholke, I'd imagine. Mm, interesting, but I don't think it, it'll be very interesting because I don't think you. I don't think 
the, see the the I, I agree with what you say, Pete, about young kids and and backing up the second game, and often you don't get the same level of output second game. But we we had a we had a milestone win. That that was a, a a club best win, like probably top five home and away win of all time. And, oh, no doubt. And we're talking no about doubt. making five changes to that team. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, well, don't I don't think we can. I don't think they'll be big. I don't think they'll be that big at all. Um, I, I I actually think they'll be quite minimalist, and that's why I think if Sloan's not one hundred percent, he's not going to come back in. Um, and I think it's just about balance and rewarding the guys that have done the job. You know, uh, the good thing about young players is they don't. Uh, uh, they, I think Pikey said they don't. They don't know what to be scared of yet, and um, and I think that you're going to get you're going to get one hundred percent out of them for a while. I just think we need to put them in. Well, the other issue, of course, is that um, Gold Coast play relatively tall, and uh, we one short down back in the tall stakes. So you'd imagine that Otten stays in and probably goes back to centre half back. Uh, with Talia, you know, I mean, two key positions will be Otten and, and Talia because Keith's not right, is he? No. No. So uh, it can only be Otten. Um, what well, you'd love to see, look, honestly, you'd love to reward that side from Friday night and say unchanged. I agree. You know, no, yeah. no injury. You, that's what you'd love. But I just don't think it will happen. I think that the minute that they get, you know, um, key senior players back, they'll they'll come back in. Yeah. What well, what I'm and, getting at um, is that Hardigan going out, and Otten going back leaves us a, a potential uh, leaves a space for where Otten was supposed to be playing, which is uh, the role that Fogarty was playing. So, well, do I, don't, we, I don't think they had a role for him, mate. I, I, no, 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 no. Well, I yeah, no. Sorry. No, go on, mate. Uh, I don't think that, I, I don't think they had a role for him because he wasn't meant to be playing until the last minute. No, I, I'm, I feel certain they only picked him. Because there was pretty, pretty much he, no one else. He was short a of the emergency. He was already there. Short of the midfielders, my, my change for the week was actually just Hardigan out and Fogarty in and Otten and, um, Otten and McGovern to rotate the swing between um, the front and back, um, playing that third, that third tall. Or the, yeah, that third tall rock. That's what I reckon we're going to do. Um, and well, you've got to fit on, Matt Crouch in. If he's if Matt Crouch is fit, he's got to play. He's our best midfielder. And if, and if Sloan's fit, he'll play. And if McKay's fit, he'll play. Well, I don't know oh, about D Mac. I don't think McKay's. I don't think McKay's is automatic. Yeah, not and not with his Sloan... third concussion. Well, I, have, concussion. I, have, I have no faith what's when it comes to selection and it comes to McKay. I have no faith whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I just don't. Short of messing up the dynamic of the team, I don't know how you get D Mac back in at the moment. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think. I think. We, we, as as Fane said, we just had our one of our signature wins of our club's history, and you know we don't make the unforced change from a K if we don't have to. Um, and I think that we have to make some structural changes. And if the two A graders in Sloan and Crouch are ready, then they have to come in. Um, I still think Sloan's probably not going to be there. I so agree. if Crouch comes in, um, then I think it's going to be for either C Y or Paholki. Um, I'd like to see it be CY just because I think polky has got more of a development streak into him. I think CY has probably had his ceiling. And, oh, no, I disagree um, with that. Disagree 100,000% yeah. with that. No, he's only had uh, 25 games or something. Oh, uh, yeah. But over, over yeah. 18 years. Yeah, but he can't help having an ACL. I mean, Andy Otten's taken ten no. years to get to a hundred games for Christ's sake. One ACL. He's done one ACL in five years. No, ago. he's done. No, he's done two. He he's did done two. the year we drafted him. We knew he wasn't going to play the first year because he'd just done his ACL. All right. So how many years? So there's actually list? six years. There's actually two. So you take out. So you take out that first year. Yeah. Then, because we drafted him knowing he wasn't going to play in that first. And year. then he had three or four years without an ACL. No, no, no. H- hang on, hang on a minute, Donkey. In his third year. He got consecutive games with Phil Walsh and was looking looking money, right? Yeah. Yep. And, and, then, and then and then and hang on a hang on a minute. And then, and the then Phil, Phil passed away. Cam didn't handle it too well. Camp really didn't want to pick him, so he's out. And then the following year, he tears it up in the SANFL and doesn't get picked, and then he does his ACL. Yeah. He he should have had he actually won the McGarry if they voted correctly. That year in the SANFL. It was clearly the he best player in the SANFL. The, the point is that I don't, yeah. I don't think... I mean, Cam's got some limitations. I think his ACL has made him a bit one-paced and he does. Yeah. He is a bit fumbly under under, uh, under his knees. But he's a bloody big body player. He's almost uh, like yes. my son... 
described him as almost like a JPK in our midfield in terms of his size. I'm not quite sure we're even having this discussion because I'll tell you now, see why he's not getting dropped on the weekend. He's not getting dropped. He's playing. Why do you say that? I'm telling you, he just won't be dropped. He will not be dropped. They will not drop Cam ellis Yeoman. He's been, he is pretty much, you know, along with Gibbs, he's been a mainstay midfielder, really. I mean, him, him Gibbs and um, Greenwood have done a, a magnificent job. Yeah. There's no way in the world they're dropping the CY. No, we've been using him well, no was- actually in a, in a cooler role because he's such that really nice big body. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think what anyway, it boils down to is it's, it's going to be a bloody interesting selection. Yeah, it will be. It'll be an interesting selection for, for for the strangest of reasons, and that is that we've got a really, you know, we've, we've as you say, incredibly strong performance by a lot of junior players, and we've got senior players looking to come back. Yeah. yeah. And we, how good is our depth? Like we're actually, I think someone put up we're missing six of our top ten from less than fairest, and uh, you know we're putting in performance like last week, and we're we're talking about which players we want to keep in the side who probably wouldn't have been best twenty two last year, you know. Um, and we were thinking they all probably deserve a game. You know, there's probably 26 blokes that deserve a game this week. Yep. Anyway, it'll be very interesting. Very yep. interesting selection this week. Does anyone think uh, the Suns are going to get us? <sighs> Who'd know, mate? No. I, I, we shouldn't have another one of those horrible games in our kit bag so soon. Um, so I, I'd say that we were. I, well, I think we'll win this one. What What's the Swans' form line like? I mean, their their midfield has been just going this year. They've got no forward line apart from apart from Franklin, and their back line is aging in terms of their keys, and you know, not doesn't really light it up. They're just workman like. Is this is the Sydney uh, form line a little bit misleading? Well, that's a good, very good question, because uh, Port did them comfortably in the end. They only just hung on against the Bulldogs, who have been ordinary all year. Yeah. Um, they beat GWS, I think, which is was GWS had a lot of injuries, I think. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, probably not a great form line. I don't know. I uh, think I think Sydney are like sort of like Hawthorne were last year, where they're on the decline. And they're probably, you know, they're not the team that they were, but they're still they they still can reach back from the grave and cause a bit of pain. Like they're still like a lot of good footy players. Yeah, but they've got to have their best 22 up in, in their donkey, I reckon. Yeah. Just that, on um, yeah, just on other other clubs just quickly. I, it, Richmond have, uh, I think, outscored um, Melbourne by about 50 points in the last quarter. Melbourne are horrific. Oh, they They're a rabble. by eight goals. That was, mate, that was, it was looking like a close game at one stage. Yeah. Anyway, let's tidy this up. So everyone's going for Adelaide this week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's quickly run through the others. Uh, we've got the Anzac game tomorrow. Who reckons uh, Essendon? Collingwood. Oh, you got to pick Collingwood. Yeah, I think I'd tip Collingwood. Yeah, I'm going Essendon. Uh, and next round starting uh, on Friday night, uh, speaking of the Swans, we've got the Cats v Swans uh uh, on Friday night, is that Friday night? No, oh, sorry, too early. No. Uh, Bulldogs versus Carlton. We've got on Carlton. Friday night in the worst possible Friday night game you could Ooh. ever imagine. God, I got the Bulldogs. Donkey. Beveridge has been having a win this week, so probably know. Bulldogs. I don't know. I almost refuse to tip it on ethical grounds that they shouldn't be playing on Friday night, but um, I reckon the Bulldogs here. Yeah. yeah, I'm going the Blues. Um, sad day. We got the Cats v Sydney. Cats. Yeah, cats. Yeah, buddy, out. I think it's the cats. Uh, north, the resurgent North, led by the uh, the uh, evanescent uh, Jared Wright. <laughs> How good is he? Uh, well, every third week he's all right uh, against the sputtering power. This is the first week, so he's going to be shit. Yeah, he'll be shit this week. Eddie Head no. Stadium. Uh, We're going to stick with the roost. Yeah, I reckon Kangas. Yeah, yeah, Kangas. Yeah. Giants and the Lions. I don't think any anyone could tip the Lions after last week. No, Giants. Yeah. yeah. Hawthorne Saints. The Saints were gallant against GWS. Can they uh, cause an upset? Where's the US, for God's sake? Is, it, is this in Tasmania, this one? 
Umbilical Stadium. I don't know. Where is that? US. Umbilical. <laughs> University of Tasmania Stadium. It's down in Tassie, so you'd say the Hawks. Oh, Utahs. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, Hawthorne. Yeah, Hawthorne. Hawks. Pete, right. Hawks. Uh, then the Bombers back up on Sunday against Melbourne, who look like shit, so uh, I'll be going Essendon. Yeah, Bombers by about 18 goals. No, I think yeah, the D's might, D's, D's will snatch one sooner or later. Oh, at Eddie no. Head. No, I'm, I'm watching this. No. It's at Eddie nah. Head. Then I'm going to stick. I'm going to go the D's. Oh, okay. Uh, Magpies v. Tigers. Anyone apart from Pete think that Collingwood can get up? Pies for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just mark you down every week. Yeah, Tigers. Yeah. And. Yeah, uh, Tigers. Interesting derby this this uh, this weekend derby uh, Dockers versus Eagles. Dockers aren't terrible. Uh, Nat Nat Fife is in Brownlow winning form. And Eagles, Eagles are on top of the ladder, but I don't. I'm not convinced by the Eagles. I reckon the Dockers. Yeah, Eagles. Dockers. I'm Nick. going Eagles. Eagles. All right. That's it should it. be a good game. It well, it should be a good game. You're right. It should be a good game. <laughs> Depends on which Frio turn up. That's right. All right, that's our preview of the round coming up. So why don't we quickly hook into Game of Crows without the music. Donkey, shut your microphone up. Um, And we had tackles last week. And what I'm noticing, uh, dear listeners, is a distinct drop-off in Game of Crows entries. Please don't be discouraged if you uh, have fallen behind or haven't uh, put in a, a tip for a week or missed a week or two because... The way this game works, you can catch up ground fairly quickly. So uh, Huey Greenwood was the leading tackler with 11. So uh, those that picked Huey got the three points. Um, and we had Ellis Yolman, I think he had eight tackles uh, for the night. So he picked up the two. And Richie Douglas, uh, don't know how many he had, but he, he was next up. So he got the one. So after five rounds we've got toby smith still out in front on 12 we've got buckets on 11 dogs 105 on 10 scorpus on nine and then josh kelly steve loffler captain and mad steve mccrow and gray crow on eight with macker on seven and then the rest of us so <clears throat> this way magic says you were to blame for the drop off because you didn't tweet it out Oh, well, what are you all, a bunch of bloody kids? <laughs> like, seriously, there's beer on the line. Surely you just put it in your bloody calendar, a little notification on your phone, oh, Game of Crows, and just put it in, for God's sakes. You need me to hold your hand. How are they going to know what the question is? <laughs> well, because I'm about to say it, Donkey. We say it every oh, week. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, all right? <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay. Uh, disposal efficiency this week. That's what we're doing. Disposal efficiency. We did that in round one. No, we did disposal efficiency. Oh, we fucking did too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, round two, actually. <laughs> round two, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, all right, something else then. Uh, let us go with uh, inside 50s. Inside 50s this week. Who do we reckon? Seed for me. Seedsman for Pete. Donkey? Uh, yeah, I'll go with a sleeves, man. Seed? Nikki, I know you're not in it, but give us your tip. I'm not in it, but I, I would have said seed as well. I would have said seed as well. Um, I'm going to go with someone else. Uh, Rory Atkins. The resurgent Rory Atkins for me. So, now, for all you bloody slackers out there, I will try and tweet and remind you all, you know, to put your tips in and put your dream team in and put your Game of Crows in, but you've got until bounce on, uh, what are we playing, Sunday afternoon, to put your Game of Crows tips in, so get them in, and uh, yeah, it's all about the beer, and if you've fallen behind, don't worry, because we might even play a catch-up round during the buy this year to try and uh, even up the ledger a little bit. So that's Game of Crows inside 50s. And that pretty much does us, I reckon. Cool. Right. Anyone got Richmond is now top of the ladder. I got somewhere to be at, at about 
four thirty tomorrow morning, so I got to go. Oh, well, you know, we'd hate to <laughs> hate, hate to uh, mess that up. Pete, Have uh, a good day, all, guys. all the best tomorrow morning, mate. For See you, you See you guys. Cheers. And uh, yeah, good night, everyone. Have a good Anzac Day. Not all.